All right, welcome everyone to the Town of Wellfleet Rights of Public Access meeting on uh, Friday, October 22nd, 1 p.m. Um, let's see, we have Jim Falcone, Jim Falcone joining us today, welcome. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about South Lieutenant Island and he can give us some information on that if you'd like. Um, I'm just first gonna review the agenda for today. Um, we'll start with approving the minutes from September 16th. Um, we had a site visit on October 15th to South Lieutenant Island. So we can review our observations from that visit. Um, we'll discuss some of the Lieutenant Island access issues, including the road before the bridge. We'll move on to Chipman's Cove. Um, there is some discussion about um, parcels in Chipman's Cove 8082 and 239 going into care of conservation and um, we drafted a letter of concerns for those parcels and let's see uh, Ryan Curley is with us today to discuss um, the taking custody of town parcels and explain that process um, then we'll move on to any other business if anyone has anything else to add and that will be it so so okay so the minutes from september 16th um did everybody approve of those minutes did we have any corrections to make i move we approve the moment minutes of uh 16th from the 16th september 16th great i'll second, second. That. Oh, okay oh sorry you to do it. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a vote to approve the minutes from September 16th. Uh, aye. Barbara? Whoops, sorry. Aye. Sorry. Barbara Carboni, aye. Aye. John. John. Aye. Steve. Aye. Melissa. Aye. Great. Okay, we can move on. So, site visit on October 15th. Um, First of all, I wanna say it was really nice to see everybody in person and to take a nice long walk <laughs> all around that area. Um, basically, we um, went and looked at the puddle, we walked the road, um, we walked down to the end of the road out to the tide flats so we can get a sense of um, that access point and um, you know the path that's there that goes out to the tide flats and um, you know, the, the convenience basically that that access road provides. We also, we actually walked the entire way to the other side um, over by way 100 and we walked that way as well. Had a look at the puddle there, um, walked out to where you access the flats there to get, get a sense of the path on that side. And then we even um, continued up way 100 looking at the town parcel um, that um, is currently under conservation just to consider whether that um, could be an option in the future for um, access to the flats from there because the road on that side is clearly deteriorating and not in good shape so the access road that is in, in front of 154, 153 so um, if, does anyone want to discuss some of the observations that we made that day anyone want to add to that Like a nice picture of you in the puddle. Oh yes, that's, I can I can share that. I believe right screen share. Yeah. I was going to say the exact same thing. Okay. I haven't done this before, but let's see. <clears throat> share screen. Share. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, <laughs> we got a picture. I went in my waders and stood in the middle of the puddle so we can get a sense of the depth. Um, I kind of wish we had a, a picture from a little farther back as well so we can see the, the, just how long the puddle is. But um, we can clearly see here that this is its problem. You know, that's, that's a lot of salt water for <clears throat> 
and um, you know, it's making access to that area more and more difficult. Um, you know, what we, what we are trying to observe from that walk as well as is just how vast that area is. And, you know, there's, there's effectively only two ways to get out there to work uh, Sil Silver Spring Harbor to get to the tide flats. So um, I know I personally feel like this is a very important road and that it should be addressed and should be fixed. And, you know, that we should be able to do better than having people drive through a lake like this. Um, I also have, we wanna move on to look at this. Now you have to learn how to stop sharing. Yeah, so is this, um, you're still What's sharing something. Okay, so the Cape Cod Commission website, is that coming up? Not I'm yet. Not looking at, okay. Stop sharing, new share, okay. So I'm learning this on the fly, I haven't done this before. <laughs> there is a website um, that Nancy had shared with us before that we'd looked at regarding the boathouse to see um, the effects of erosion on that side of the island. Um, so I pulled up this chronology viewer so that we can kind of have a sense of this road and what it looked like in the past. Um, so right now I've got, a, is the map showing up now? On the yes. screen? Yes. Okay. So you can see, you can go through the different years, um, say we put it on 1971, and you can see um, that access road pretty clearly there. No lake on it. And you can move forward. And this is 1984, if you can see. Um, this is the area where the puddle is. And you can see the road is dry on this map. We move forward to, let's see, 2002. <clears throat> and on this map, I notice you can start to see a depression in the road just slightly. And that's from 2002. And then once we get to 2014, um, I can't zoom in any farther, but you can see that shadow there, which I believe starts to be the indication of that puddle forming. Now, um, Jim Falcone, did you want to give us a little history on that road, how, how long that puddle's been there, and some information. Around th 30 years ago, we could drive on that road uh, with a regular vehicle. Uh, no four-wheel drive vehicle was necessary, but it was always a little wet. Mm -hmm. And then that, it, it, the last few years, it's been, it really has mushroomed into a uh, what it is now but it's been fairly once the water the tide got in there it really accelerated it okay but what i found and i've observed that for an awful long time and and because while well, my grant was out there and i would see it daily that that bottom is dry uh, at certain tides. The um, and I'm not sure when the how that was presented uh, to the uh, conservation commission by the landholder, the uh, Autobahn. But it, it's important to to understand that that is not a source of water from that area. That was that is dry. It is a sand base. It's it's a, uh, most of it is all sand. Closest 
to the abutting property is a little muddier. And that's where cars have been stuck uh, in that area. But uh, the, it, it is a sand base and it is dry uh, in, on certain tides. Um, did you want to say something, John? I have a question for, for Jim. Jim, what, what I was surprised, and you could see it from the photo of Sonia standing in the water, is how deep it was. And I can't think of anywhere else around town where there's been a high tide flow over a, a, a sandy area where there's anything that deep. Um, I'm thinking of some places on the Audubon. I'm thinking of uh, Fisherman's Landing um, near the dike. Uh, some places up and down uh, Great Island and, and further um, south. Do you have any suggestion on why it's so deep? If What's you happened? had, if you had observed Way 100 uh, prior to uh, the Autobahn, when they received a grant uh, to fix the road, the uh, Way 100 portion of the road, uh, because turtles were being trapped. Uh, I guess that's the story okay. I was told. Turtles are being, were being trapped in the gullies. Those are pretty significant gullies. Uh, and that area uh, was not inundated by the tides at all. Once you have that influence of the water there, and this is storm action and so forth, uh, then you would very quickly acquire something like that occurring. If you were at, um, if you went out by the, uh, uh, the Meadow Ave on the Southwest corner, that area did have extreme, I could not pass that road uh, going to the end uh, where in the last house being Thayer's home, uh, I could not pass that with a four wheel drive. That was built up. And that was built up, uh, I think primarily Mr. Thayer paid for it, but that was built up with the Conservation Commission observing that. And that was a, uh, that was very quick. So it, it this is not unique. Uh, okay. Once water starts, it gets, it's very dramatic. And as we drive on it now, because of the, uh, the forces that the trucks make, they're literally causing uh, an influx of the uh, material to disperse. Uh, so it, uh, it's, we're, we're really doing a number on it now. Every time we drive through it, uh, we're really accelerating it. You, you just hit on one of my concerns. It's not water alone, it's water plus trucks. And we're trying to get the trucks through I guess my second observation about all this, Sonia, is I have rarely been, when I see a problem, I like to solve it. And I find this very um, frustrating. Like yes. every idea I kept coming up with, there was something against it, quite legitimately, I'm not, not complaining. Um, so we, we maybe need a further brainstorming idea. Well, that one of, the, issue, one of the members of the Conservation Commission said we should build a bridge, which would probably work, but uh, Lord only knows what it would cost. And, and our, I don't know if the Audubon would accept it anyway, because it is on their property. But it's frustrating. Well, if, the, if I was the property owner, being the Audubon, and requested to repair that road, uh, the road, all of the roads on Lieutenant Island have been repaired by material that is foreign to the area. Meadow Road has been built up at least two, two feet at least. Uh, D Street, twice a year, is filling in the marsh there with foreign material. Way 100 has been filled in with foreign material. Uh, from what I understood, and I wasn't at that meeting, 
they did not say no. They said, come up with a solution. The material, the only solution that I would come up with if they didn't want to truck in material, I mean, the, the Conservation Commission had absolutely no problem allowing boulders, which are far into the area, to be placed in the marsh area, in water areas. They had no problem with that. I don't quite understand why they are concerned, but if they are concerned about foreign material, I would suggest the material that is there, that has been pushed out of the hole, be pushed back in and then uh, added uh, a top to that with shells, which is done along the entire uh, Lieutenant Island Road that is marsh and the Conservation Commission has absolutely no problem with that. They seem to only have a problem with that particular spot. I'd like to know why, why they're treating that differently. Well, that leads into one idea which may, uh, may be useful. The Conservation Commission has two kinds of meetings. The one at five o'clock is um, a legal meeting in which they, they have to vote yes or no to a certain proposal, but the four o'clock meeting, you can have conversations and, and try ideas. And um, I think several members of our pack have said that might be a, a useful way forward. Uh, I think what you're saying suggests that maybe that could be our next step. Um, I think the other thing to consider here is that um, we haven't really gotten much communication back from Audubon. Now, I know Melissa Lowe was on vacation um, unavailable for some time, but I feel that until we get some communication back from Audubon, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure we should be attending uh, meetings with conservation just yet until we sort of have our concerns in order. Um, you know, I've, so just on another note, I've actually got this item on the agenda with Shellfish Advisory as well on Monday at 6.30 p.m. Um, the idea there being that we're just trying to sort of make it this information available to the shellfishing community and see what people have to say um, just on the shellfishing side, um, you know, how see who uses the road, who feels it's important. Um, so basically, I think we should be gathering some support um, you know, from the shellfishing community, um, from Audubon, and, you know, any other groups of interest, you know, shellfish department, that sort of thing, before we, we move forward with a meeting of conservation, um, you know, whether that be a meeting or whether it be, um, you know, getting together a, a letter of concerns. Um, I know Melissa had started a letter with just some of our concerns. Um, you know, for that site visit. But um, I guess ideally I'm saying that we need to hear from Audubon at this point. You see what I'm saying? Like before, I, I feel like we can do much more. Um, so here. what's that? Well, Melissa, here. could I say one thing and then I'll leave the meeting. Um, I just, I did notify, uh, as in detail as possible, your committee, uh, the selectmen, um, the conservation committee, the Audubon, uh, and all I'm doing is presenting the facts as I see them. Mm -hmm. um, and whether whether they act on it, uh, it's, uh, I, I just, uh, there's not much I can do about it is present the facts now. Uh, the Conservation Commission seems to have a lot of power in, in stopping things. Uh, I just would like to see uh, them act on all the roads in Lieutenant Island as they're acting uh, on this road. That not This should not be any different than any of the other roads on Lieutenant Island. And the only other thing I would like to remind the committee that, and then I will leave and thank you for, for this opportunity is on the Pond Avenue, the Pond and Coastal Access Committee that I was on several years ago, elected not 
to take, to recommend taking the parcel of land by eminent domain. And there was a very specific reason. Uh, and that specific reason was if we used the Pond Avenue because of the configuration of the change in the dune, there would not be enough room for the shell fishermen and the, the boat owners and the people that like to use that, that beach area for whatever reasons, it would really cause a severe problem uh, to use that. So we said, seeing that the Audubon has not asked us to get out and what prompted that whole situation was the Audubon placed the stone barriers along around the island with no, no one talked about it. They just said it. And that was an area that they had threatened to put the stones. And there was a big uh, to do about it. The people on the island went bananas uh, and they said, okay, we won't do it. So we said, there's not a problem now. And I don't believe uh, with Melissa there, there will be a problem. But if you just use the Pond Avenue Road, that's going to create a huge problem for the shell fishermen that own grants and have to park there. Uh, and the road will be extremely narrow. You'd be cutting into dunes. Uh, so it's one of those things that be careful what you wish for. There was a reason why we said, no, we don't want to take that land. And that's it. So with that, I appreciate you letting me speak and uh, I will sign off. You are, Great. Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. Well, that was very helpful. I, I think he had some good information regarding um, road repairs and the, the precedent for repairs on the island. Um, I think he also had a good point in stating that this road shouldn't be treated differently from other roads. Um, you know, it, it should be a priority as well to, to repair it if they're repairing other roads in the island. Um, that being said, I feel like at this point, as I mentioned before, we do need to connect with Audubon to see where they stand, to see what what they want to do. This is their property. Um, so in terms of, of where we move forward, um, I'd like to see about uh, potentially, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that Audubon will be interested in, in a public meeting. Um, they may be more comfortable talking about this issue, um, you know, over the phone. Um, so <clears throat> um, at this point, how about you and Melissa speaking with Melissa? Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Um, I was wondering if we might have better luck. Um, and you should you should pull in Ivan. Uh, Ian as well. Ivan, I, Ian Ives as well, because yeah. he he saw something in Barnstable which led to his gravel idea, and right. we need to know more about that that background. Right, right exactly. So. Um, yeah, at this stage, I, I just like to, you know, reestablish contact with them, you know, reach out, possibly write a letter um, and, and set up a meeting so we can see what what their thoughts are. Um, you know, after watching the, the conservation meeting, it, <clears throat> you know, I, there was almost a sense from Ian that, you know, Audubon, might consider something like retreat and you know that ideally that's not something we want we'd like we'd like to see this road repaired and not just left as it is um so um should i make a motion to set up a meeting with audubon i'll make the motion since you're involved i i move that sonia and melissa set up a meeting with audubon to review the history and suggest some uh, ways forward. I'll second that. Okay, great. Um, so we take a vote. 
Uh, Steve? Hi, John? Hi. Melissa? Hi. And Barbara? Hi. All right, great. Unanimous in favor? I assume you voted in favor. Yes, I voted in favor. <laughs> Forgot me. <laughs> I'm focused on uh, running the show here. Great. So, um, so Melissa or I will move forward in trying to set up a meeting with them and open up that line of communication again. Let's see. Um, so it, it sounds like what Jim was trying to touch on there was the boathouse issue. Um, we did receive communication from KP Law regarding the boathouse at this point. Um, I believe the matter goes to the select board. Um, they're gonna have to review the letter and it looks like there will be a meeting in the future where we would be invited. Um, but yeah, so there, there was some progress made um, on those questions and, and where we go from here um, has yet to be seen. So um, did anyone wanna discuss that topic at all? Yeah, I, yeah. I just would like to clarify the order of things. You, you, you suggest the select board should discuss it and then we would come in later. I wonder if it would be better to reverse that order of things if it's allowed, that we should discuss it perhaps in a closed session mm -hmm. and then um, go to the select board. But that's... Yes. That's Ryan. not my. That's not my call. That's just a suggestion. Right. Um, yes, Ryan. Um, yeah. So I talked to Charlie about this, um, like right after, we, you know, that that letter came in. Um, he says it's fine to talk about it um, in open session um, for you um, when it comes to possibly um, negotiating for purchasing um an easement or the parcel that would be an executive session for the select board um but um for when that comes up i would invite um you know your committee to attend that as well if that makes sense yeah. thank you so yeah you can definitely discuss the the yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i have to admit I, i've read through the letter but not extensively just yet i mean it's it's a lot to interpret at this point um so um any any thoughts from anyone else on on that information that we received yeah you know, put that on the next meeting agenda yeah maybe we should take some more time to look it over and, and yeah. think about things so great there is a lot to read it is a lot <laughs> and we only received it this week so i felt like it was you know I wanted to give us the opportunity to touch on it, but I, I know it was a lot to expect everyone to cover in a few days. Um, but yeah, interesting points that Jim Falcone had as well about accessing the boathouse and that road. Um, I had spoken to him on the phone and he had said there was an issue with, which we are aware of as well with Heron Point Road and where that road is located. And if that road were to be properly reestablished, it, it, could create some issues. So, um, you know, all, all something, things that we're gonna have to have a look at. Yes, Melissa? Um, I'm not entirely convinced that the usage, would, usage of the road would really change if it were to become officially a town road. Um, it's already widely used by many different people. Um, I don't, I'm not as familiar with the situation in the summer at higher tides, but um, I don't really see the usage changing that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, uh, what Jim was discussing, is that in reference to the location of the road? Like, cause currently, you know, as we've discussed before, like we, you know, we may need to survey this, but that paper road, which is Heron Point Road is, you know, not, where people are driving, that's actually on the Audubon line. So I suppose the issue there would be, 
you know, again, I, I'm not totally 100% understanding the, the legal information we've received just yet. I would have to review that some more, but um, just understanding how that road would work, like whether there would be issues with accessing the landing. Um, you know, I mean, would, would the town have to, if the town were to in, reinstate Heron Point Road as a, as a public way somehow, would, that, would the road have to be moved? I is think the question is, where is the road? Yeah, and it, that's uh, it, right, so. So again, we're back on surveying. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, uh, the actual Heron Point Road as drawn in the paper map is not where everybody's driving. What everybody's driving is on Audubon property. Right, right, which is a whole other issue, which is what I think Jim was referring to. Um, he had mentioned something as well about um, power lines or something um, being located where the paper road is on the map and that potentially causing problems. So. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to have to look into this a little bit further, I think, in the next meeting, once we've had time to review um, the documents and, yeah, just kind of reconvene on all that information. <laughs> so, um, is, does any, anyone have anything else to add regarding that topic, the boathouse? Not at the moment. Great. Um, yes, John. Yeah, I just I just had one other thing. Um, there was um, uh, an offer from the Open Space Committee to mm -hmm. participate in the process. Okay. And um, it occurred to me that they probably did not recognize that one of the agar's concerns is to maintain the use of the the boathouse for um, shell fishing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will make sure that the Open Space Committee understands that point. That, that, that makes, that makes a, a, a simple purchase a little tricky. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's very important, important to the Agers to, to maintain that access and to have that boathouse available. So um, I will, I'll take that responsibility, to make, make that point clear. Okay, that'd be great, thanks. Um, I think I've got one of these maps here. My screen sharing. Another, just while we're on Lieutenant Island access, um, that Northwest corner we looked at before, that's the other side of the island. I'm gonna see if I can share an image here. Um, Get my maps in order. So are we still screen sharing with this map? Stop share. Yes. All right. So now we aren't. Here we go. Let me pull up a map. Has that changed? What are we looking at now? A black screen. Oh, okay. So that didn't work. Cool. New share. It says you started, but we you haven't arrived yet. Okay. What I'm trying to show here is that northwest corner. Um, I'm not sure why the image isn't coming up. Or maybe I can look at it on this map. <laughs> Is the Cape Cod Commission one still up? No. I've got a blank screen, but then I'm a slow uh, on a slow Wi-Fi, so might just be still on its way. Try this again. Go back to where we were, because this has a map as well. That's the old map. Got it. Okay. You want me to share mine, Sonia? Yeah, or can we can we see here? Will this work? If you've got a if you've got the map out and ready, you could share it. Please do. 
because I'm having technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> oh, you have to stop yours first. Okay, stop, share, got it. Okay. Everybody see that? Oh, great, thank you. This is yeah. much better than that. Okay, so you want Northwest Corner? Yep, yeah, please. Great, so let's see, see that, um, where are we? That land parcel 102, right? So we had this on our list of, of spots we just wanted to have a peek at um, regarding access. So um, I think potentially there shouldn't be a problem for this access point. As you can see, um, I don't know if you guys can make out, right where it says, uh, Cliff Street, First Street. Mm -hmm. That's actually the path down to the beach. And then right above 104 and 103, that's the other path down to the beach. Those are both on paper roads. Um, the, the spot where you park a vehicle to get there is at that intersection of the paper roads. So I think that access point from what we can see in a map here should be good. Um, unless anyone sees any problems happening in the future with that point? I mean, is, is there a way like those, would that paper road situation change? Well, isn't the question of whether or not Second Street is public or private? Um, no, just whether or not, whether that those access points would ever become a problem. So, but they're not on private property, they're paper roads. They could be but, private though, right? You mean like access could be blocked maybe by the subdivision, the owners of the roads? Well, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to park on a private road unless you're, unless you own it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, Have any of the owners raised objection? Um. Objection to having shellfishmen or, or the public. Well, to, to you coming parking, shellfishing. Um, I've no, I've never had an issue. I know um actually the owners of 104 and I've met the people at 98 as well. So it, it hasn't seemed like it's been a problem, but um, you know, just in terms of securing access, I was wondering. I guess I was under the assumption there that if it's a paper road, it it should be okay, but um, if we wanted to secure access there, what will we need to do then if it's in a private neighborhood? Hmm. Something to think about. But anyway, I just want to make the observation that that, that was the status of it. That the way that, um, that the beach, that the tide flats are accessed on that corner is, is over pri uh, paper roads. So just a note there. Sonia has a suggestion if, mm -hmm. if it were me as the shellfisher person, there are five parcels there which are involved, 102, 103, 104, 92, 98. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you know and think we have good um, relations with at least two of them, mm -hmm. I, I suggest just to, to go around and see if anyone has a problem and say, you know, it's, it's, it's not very busy, I think. Um, just get some, try to get some more local support. Right, yeah, great. Okay, well, just touching on sure. that subject. Um, and the precedent for that is what happened um, at the, um, west end of Omaha Road because what what uh, Barbara got was local support mm -hmm. at the corner right and so far so good right great great okay well um any anything else to add regarding Lieutenant Island for today anyone 
Shall we move on to Chipman's Cove? Oh, great. Thanks for the mapping, Melissa. <laughs> Um, so first update I'll make on Chipman's Cove. I did speak to Nancy about that parking sign. Um, Melissa, do you want to just move the map over so we can show Old Pier Road just to show what we discussed last time? So Old Pier Road is just over here. And um, last time we spoke, we were discussing some parking issues there. Um, you can see there's marsh to the north and we were saying we weren't really sure about what could be done about um, you know, making more parking available just because it's mostly on a marsh on the right side of the road. Um, and then we also discussed the fact that some people were parking at the very end of the road and blocking access to the tide flats. So I did speak to Nancy about that and she's in contact now with the DPW to um, put up some signage right at that opening onto the tide flats to try to keep people from parking there. Um, I'm not sure what, what the language will be on the sign, but it's basically gonna be at that entrance to try to keep people from parking and blocking that entrance. So, um, Jordan, do you, is Jordan here right now? Oh, uh, yes, Jordan is here. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> Has Nancy mentioned anything about this sign? Um, no, she hasn't. I'm just okay. learning about it now. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, it, it's in the process. It's in the works. She did contact the DPW and, and it, it should be coming up. So, so awesome. that's that. Great. Um, okay. So moving on to the, uh, taking custody of those, the town, taking custody of those parcels, 239, 82, and 80, right? For conservation. That was the topic we were discussing. So in our last meeting, we discussed drafting some concerns uh, to send to the select board regarding putting those parcels into conservation. Um, so I worked with Barbara a little bit on that. I sent you guys out a list, correct? Can I oh, ask some concerns? A yep. For me? yep. Um, what is the situation here? I, I thought that the Conservation Commission dropped these as- Yes, they did. Okay. Um, that was dropped, but they'll be considered again. And that's why uh -oh. we- At next town meeting? Um, John, when did you say you had mentioned it? You'd kind of brought up the topic. The Open Space Committee is planning to put all three of those parcels on the December town meeting. December town meeting, okay. Right, so that's that's news, you know, a couple of weeks old. I don't know what the current situation is, but that was the plan. Okay, so we were just trying to figure out what our concerns would be as a committee if these parcels were to go into conservation. So, um, yes, Ryan. Um, so they have not submitted a request to the select board um, to include these parcels on the December town meeting warrant. Um, right now um and it's gonna at this point it's too late um for them to submit any additional warrants uh requests uh the warrant's going to be closed as of tuesday um and yeah i i haven't received anything so it can't go on an agenda um the i mean it, they they could it, they could be talking about the springtown meeting um so i'm not really sure I think, Ryan, that's probably what's going on. Is they're, they're looking ahead to next spring, so we've got time to work on it. Great. Well, I just kind of threw, I mean, I, I sent out a list of concerns that, that I could think of, and, you know, that's obviously something we can just kind of play with over time. If anyone has anything to add or, you know, we can take some things off there, but it, I was trying to come up with some things I could think of. Um, John, Sonia, one, one key thing is um, the uh, if if we if the the items get uh, voted in favor next spring, 
then it goes to conservation commission and one of the conservation commission rules is no motorized vehicles mm -hmm. and I, I i i don't know the details of these properties but i'm sure that's an issue at parcel 80. Mm -hmm. people drive across there um i don't know about 239 and yeah, on the question of 82 yeah. it's just a question it's just a question of pe do people drive up and down the beach there uh, not that I know of, right? Um, Nobody drives on 80, 82, or 239 currently. Um, I think the, the issue that Sonia raised is the potential to need to move the road or to have to drive on it should sea level rise cause any issues there. Is that right, Sonia? Yeah, I think, and I think it was, you had mentioned at the last meeting um, that at one point the, the water there was a storm and the water had come up and inundated a portion of the road so the you know and that's how we we came to that concern like if if that road um were to ever become compromised and, and it would have to be shifted would that create a problem for vehicle access going up to the the north of indian neck um you know because that's also that's access for you know kayaking and canoes and things like that as well from that parking lot we can see um there's shellfish farms right at the end um of Indian Neck, and then there's obviously the the tide flats and recreational and commercial shellfishing in the on the inside of Chipman's Cove as well. So, um, you know, it's it's an important access point for sure. And then, um, yeah, I was just trying to look through some of the wetlands bylaws and and just try to think of some concerns. Obviously, you know, I was wondering if there's there would be concerns with people crossing over the property um, to shellfish, you know, things like that. So, can um, can you tell me what about that paper road that's at the top edge of eighty? It doesn't look like it's being used, but it is a paper road. Top edge of eighty. Yep, that. Oh. There, that's not the part. So there is an X. You go just slightly north, Melissa, on that map. Just a little bit. So people do drive onto the beach there, but see, it's in parcel 38. So there's a paper road there, but I don't think you could drive there. That's like a, that's a slope, I believe, right? But it uh, looks like, it looks like there's a track that goes down from 38 into 80. and. Um, it's a walking Melissa path. says that's not you. That's a footpath. So you can drive so parcel 38. You can see that sandy area there. That's as far as people drive. Okay. Kind of like in the middle of it. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Good. And, um, and the, the sand is really soft. Yeah. Any farther than that and, you know, farther south than that, then it's just, you know, it gets muddy and, you know, you can't, you can't drive down there. So you know, the issue wouldn't be driving on the beach on any of those parcels. It would just be more a matter of like, if, if the road were to be moved, you know, you wouldn't want to lose access. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that would be a problem or not, but those were just things I can think of. But, um, you know, if this isn't even an issue right now, we can just kind of table the, these thoughts for the moment, I would say, right? Yeah. You know, wait, wait to see what happens. I mean, it, it might not even go on the agenda in the spring, so or on the town warrant. So, so are we wrapped up then with Chipman's Cove? Unless oh, someone... I just you go ahead. You've raised an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Um, we we talk about the possibility of uh sea level rise causing a shift in the roads or access to the roads. Um, and I was beginning to th think about that in terms of the uh, shellfish area and, and how do you like them apples? Mm -hmm. Be because the on the land side, you've got revetments. Yeah. And as the sea level rises, you you, your shell fishing access is going to be squeezed more and more up to those revetments. So I, I um, well, that's primarily the, a the, 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 the shellfish advisory board at 
some point should do a shellfish shell fishing plan. And I, th I think um, it would be good that, that this is an issue that needs to be considered because it could affect the access to lots of shellfish grants, not in the next 10 years, but in the next 20. Right. All, all another topic at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, your problem, not mine. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else to add right now? Okay, so should we move on? Ryan Curley, do you wanna talk about taking custody of town parcels? Um, if you want, um, what are some of your questions? Um, for me, I, I don't really know entirely, um, you know, what that means, like to take custody of a parcel uh, by a committee. So I guess I was just trying to understand like, what would, would that be kind of like how conservation cares for certain parcels in town? Um, um, yes, to, to an extent, yes. Um, yeah, uh, it's similar to basically any committee can request um, request uh, town property um, if they have it with a proposed use for it. Um, I am concerned about the continued, I mean, this is just me personally, I am concerned about the continued push to transfer uh, town landings into the care of the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we would have lost three currently used access points on Mayo Beach um, if, if the Conservation Commission decided, hadn't decided that um, because they had uh, groins on them that it was a conflict for them. Um, so I am very concerned about, you know, the transfer. So I was thinking about a way that would both preserve um, the, the usage of, of the parcels, um, you know, it, and it's more than just, you know, used by the general public as well as shell fishermen, as well as boaters, so on and so forth. Um, and at the same time, having some form of protection and also to kind of have a break in case a future select board decides to, you know, consider sell selling a parcel. Um, so um, I, I think it would kind of make sense to have, have a committee in charge of them um, to kind of give, give them uh, all the landings the attention that they really need. Um, I know that in Provincetown, they have a, a harbor committee um, that is uh, really active in managing uh, their landings. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of similar to that, um, I think it would kind of make sense. So, but that's, I mean, and you could uh, propose, uh, let's say taking in one parcel um, and see how that goes. Okay. Um, and, um, the only thing is, is that the submission schedule, we generally would need it by middle of November. So the, the schedule is November 15th. Um, mm -hmm. It should be submitted. It would be submitted in writing. Um, but, um, you know, there is some allowance for it to come in a little bit later um, as well. Um, but, and then beyond that, there's a whole process that it has to go through. Um, the planning board would hold the public hearing um, after it, if the select board approves it first, um, and then it would, would pro progress from there. So, um, with the goal of it being on the warrant for the um, annual town meeting in the spring. Okay. So, could we then say, as as you suggested, like? we could potentially apply to um, take custody of a parcel and, and see how that goes, kind of try it out and um, take more if it works out. Is that what you're suggesting? Um, that would be my suggestion. Yes. You know, um, yeah. And I, I would like more attention paid to all of the, the various 
you know, uh, landings or, or ways to the water mm -hmm. um, that the town currently owns. And frankly, the, the select board right now does not have the time um, to examine them all because there's so many of them. Um, so, yeah. So, um, you know, I talked to Melissa about this in the past, like would, would something like Powers Landing be a parcel that we we should try to take custody of first as it's a, a really important one um, for both grant holders, you know, the, the public, the recreation for commercial shell fishing. Um, would, would that be a, st a good starting point, do you think? Um, I don't know, I, I, I would say probably a good starting point might be the landings that um, that the Conservation Commission turned down two years ago um, along Mayo. Um, and then um, powers, there might be an issue with the, um, with the beach department or something. I don't know. I mean, that's a, a pretty important landing. Um, so. Great, um, we'll look into the, the Mayo beach landings yeah okay um what does everyone think about taking custody of town parcels do you have any opinions or questions for ryan <laughs> i think ryan's idea of uh trying one and see what happens would be good uh and I don't know the history of Mayo, the Mayo Beach Landing, but that uh, would be pretty important if it was lost. Anyone else have anything to add? Um, I, th I think it's a good idea. Um, I'm wondering who, I guess, it, Ryan, does the beach department maintain town owned landings? Is, are they in charge of keeping maintenance there? Um, it's split between the, the, um, the beach department, um, which provides the oversight of them, um, and also the DPW. And to some extent, the shellfish department as well, because you know they're going to so many of them. Um, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so, oh, sorry, Melissa. Go ahead, Barbara. Um, so, and Ryan, this is Barbara Carboni. I'm the newest member. Um, so the, the idea is we, I guess we would need to find out what will it mean, what would it mean for the committee to have, you know, custody, um, of the landings and we could start would it be a good idea to start by talking to town departments or other, I don't know, other committees, or do you, do you have any suggestions? I mean, you could talk to town departments. Um, you have basically a, about a month um, okay. both to meet the submission schedules. Um, the, um, I mean, and you could talk to other, um, I guess, other town committees. I, I would, I would recommend talking to the SAB um, because they are, uh, you know, the, the there isn't really like a um, Wealthy doesn't really have a a dedicated body that like oversees. Um, these things. Um, so I don't know. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. So, um, and the Mayo Beach ones were um, map 20, parcel 16, 12, 11. Um, I think 31 as well. And were there any others there? I think that's 
Let's see. Yeah, I think those those were the parcels. And say once those, let's say those parcels go into our care, what is our responsibility from there? Um, well, you could, you know, develop signage, um, ensure that they're being used properly, um, and, you know, that they're maintained um, as ways to access um, the water, you know, and, and that, yeah. Um, they, those parcels, I don't think there's a vehicle access off of any of them, but there are walking paths. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure. Both uh, uh, 23, uh, 16, and 12 are, are um, common landings as well by state law. Okay. And the beach is also um, shellfish farm access as well. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, those, I think those would be a good start. I mean, the public uses those beaches, shell fishermen use them. Um, yeah. Um, the only one that uh, might not be a good parcel is 31 mm -hmm. um, because I, I think there's going to be a, I don't know, there has to be something that, that the, they've been talking about uh, potentially doing a seawall um, on that parcel to protect the road. Um, because, but right now it's just being renourished every year. Um, so we'll see. But that parcel also does include Keller's Corner. Yep, that's Keller's Corner. That, which is, um, that is a wild picking area. Yep. Um, so there's actually um, right where the road bends that there was basically pylons from an old town pier, correct, Brian? An old pier. Um, yeah, yeah, that's where the Chiquested um, Inn was. Right. So all along those pylons, there's a lot of shellfish growth, um, clams and oysters. So that's a wild picking area as well. And then, um, you know, there's, there's farms all along that whole beach as well. So. Yep. But um, so, like said, that's um, going to be considered for a seawall, so it might be an issue. Sorry, was that Melissa? So I'm hearing that the the benefits to our committee taking custody of these parcels would be um, preventing the town from selling them, and then also um, the ability to maintain them and help um, just, I think our committee has heard a lot of the issues between user groups at multiple um, access points to the water and maybe this could be a way to potentially resolve those issues too if we were to um, take custody of these areas and manage them. What does the committee think about this? Is this something we want to pursue? Did Barbara have her hand up? I see John. Yeah, but it, yeah, it can, mine can, my question can wait. Well, go ahead, Barbara. Um, uh, well, I, I spent a little time looking in the registry to see what sort of restrictions um, there are when the Conservation Commission get, um, you know, ha takes um, control of a parcel, and they, you know, they, none, they're, some of them just limit it to uses related to, you know, Chapter 40, Section 8C for conservation purposes. Um, some of them specifically allow passive recreation. Some specifically allow refer to hunting and fishing. So I think. An advantage is that if there were a conveyance, you know, to this committee, you know, and that were recorded, then whatever restrictions the committee, you know, found appropriate, including based on public input, it could put those conditions, um, you know, in in a in a restriction in a recorded restriction, which I think would be an advantage. Or a lack of restriction. Oh, exactly. Yes, yes. But I, 
um, it depends, I guess, two sides of the coin, specifically, I guess, exactly. So specifically allowing for certain purposes, exactly. Um, yes, John? I'm, I'm just a, a little concerned that we're putting, as it were, cart before horse. If, if our proposal to take over some of these um, access ways is going to the planning board, the planning board is likely to ask, well, once you've got control of it, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I, um, I suppose if there's a deadline this year, there'll be a deadline next year as well. And we'd be in a lot better shape if we had um, a small document which said, this is what we're gonna do when we take control of them. I'm thinking of a, uh, a particularly a parcel down, at, down on old, old Wharf, which needs some looking after. Um, is that the landing? Yeah, okay. right. Okay. So yeah. I, I'm just, I just think that we could spend some useful time and it would not, not be a very long or lengthy or complicated. I'm talking about the document uh, down between 38 and 39. That, that's what, where the landing is. Yeah, um, that, that would make sense as well as, uh, oh, 38 and 39. Um, that's a uh, conservation trust. Yeah, 39 is conservation trust. Um, but I know that they are concerned about a number of issues, uh, uh, kayak issues there. Mm -hmm. But the big point is, if if we if we had a if we own own the landing or own the landing were given to us to manage, what would we do? And um, I could think of lots of ideas, but they might be different. People on the committee might have different thoughts and. Um, we have to connect, we have to cooperate with the uh, beach administrator and uh, shellfish advisory board. Um, Harbor masters gets involved because there's boat, boats going on and off at these landings. Mm -hmm. So but I think it, I think we should do it, but I think we need, we need a um, procedural document to go with it. Yeah, we need some kind of a plan. I mean, we touched right. on this in our joint meeting as well, right? Kind of, you know, the whole idea of managing landings, um, managing user groups and things like that and, and coming up with some kind of a plan for, for how those landings should get used. So I suppose, you know, we should have a clearer picture of, of what it is we wanna do before we have to take these parcels. Right, I, right, an explanation of why. I mean, I, I think as the first step, sort of report on existing conditions, trends that we're seeing, this is one solution just to explain why, how we got to the point or how we're getting to the point of considering taking possession of them, taking control of them. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I feel like definitely at this point, like we're probably not ready to, mm -hmm. to make a November deadline <laughs> to take right. on parcels. Right. Um, are right. we just doing it there, everyone? Yeah, and it, it's probably gonna be a little bit later than November, um, just because, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. We're more likely than not going to have another outdoor town meeting or, or something along those lines or because I, I don't see COVID going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, at this point, do we just want to kind of start coming up with the plan for how we want to move forward on this? You know, it could be something we start piecing together over a couple meetings, start doing some research. Um, Can we each just uh, put together a little document with our thoughts and then uh, yeah, maybe. toss them all together and see what happens? 
great. Yeah, maybe yeah. kind of outlining what, what our responsibilities would be and, and what our mission would be really in, in taking control of those parcels. Um, That's a good suggestion. Yeah, great. So is this, um, should we make a motion here? I move that we, um, oh, how would I word this? We, <laughs> put we really, do we really need a motion? Can we just um, do it? I mean, it's not something that uh, has any lasting. Right, because we're not really, at a, yeah, okay, got it. So, so at this point, we're just gonna move forward with kind of, um, getting our intentions together. We can each come up with our own list, you're saying, of, of uh, responsibilities and um, you know, basically a plan for what our um, taking custody of, of these parcels would look like. Do, and do we have any, uh, uh, some, some other committee's document that we could start with? Uh, uh, Conservation Commission, of course, I'm, I'm assuming has a big uh, list of what they want to accomplish for their land. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we have anything? Does any other department that we know of have similar ones that we could mimic? Oh, right. Like the, the Conservation Commission has a short list of things not to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. Um, well, I mean, you know, I think the main goal is to maintain access, right, to um, to the water and to the activities that are taking place. Um, you know, whether that be, you know, fishing, boating, shell fishing. You know, all of those various interests. Um, but yeah, creating the wording for that, I suppose we can we can play with if everyone wants to come up with with their own pieces to add. And like Steve was saying, we <laughs> um, review those ideas and mm -hmm. try to consolidate and, and come up with a, a document. It might take some might take some time and it doesn't have to happen um, right. by the next meeting necessarily, but you know, we if we can all take some time to think about that idea and mm -hmm. what we want to include in that. I think that's good. Great. All right. Well, so anything else to add on that topic? Any questions for Ryan before we move on? No, but thank you, Ryan, for for being here and answering questions. Yeah, yep. thank you, Ryan. Great. So moving on, any other business we want to discuss in this meeting before we adjourn? I just want to say that I uh, walked along Ring Road and then out onto the flats and it's possible to walk that. Yep. Getting yep. a road in there would be a bit of a challenge, but uh, doable. And, uh, and I suspect Audubon would be more amenable to us building a road there than Conscom is filling the puddle with rock. To, to building a road going down that hill? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's not their property though at the end of the road, where the current path is? That is their property. You're the one that told me that. <laughs> there, well, there, there's a couple of things. There's, if you look at that map, do we have that map, Melissa? Still? Yeah. Uh, back to the bridge. Yep. To Ring Road. And the internet is slow. Yeah, no problem. So zoom in there, the parcels. 
the uh the, yeah just to the right there do you see that funny zigzag property the 97.2 yeah so i want to say i i'm pretty sure it's the 97.1 is actually owned by the owner of 96. so that's pride uh, um that's really I, yeah. I looked that up maybe i've got the card here but it was uh, Audubon was mentioned in that parcel. Yep. So they so Audubon has that funny zigzag parcel. Yes. And yeah. all the parcels. And then all the parcels on the other side. It's on your screen, so you can see I just highlighted ninety seven two. It's Mass yep. Audubon. Yep. Yeah. So ninety seven two. So there is a footpath right now, but it crosses ninety seven point one, which is private. Um. But yeah, the other side. I mean, eventually, I would think that we could. Um, it's a funny parcel. <laughs> like yes, it is. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> and I'm not sure whether my path stayed on it or uh, wandered onto 97.1. Yeah, but you can see the dotted line. That's the footpath that's there right now. So I there's. Don't a, there's a I don't see a dotted path. line. Uh, right there. You see the. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there is a footpath and there is a turnaround there. Um, you know, that turnaround basically. Kind of the road. Yeah, at the end of the road. And the path leads right from there, but just, you know, cross that private property. So, um, you know, I, I do think there is potential here to create access. I think I, I wouldn't say that we shouldn't deal with the puddle. <laughs> I would say that this would be something to deal with in the future. Um, but you know, this this is similar to Way 100, where it's something we we got to look into, um, and you know, possibly something. Well, you know, if we do get a meeting with Audubon, we can kind of ask about that and see what they think. You know, for for a long term solution. Uh, Melissa, can you, can you get the continuation of that last line, Alonzo, Marjorie L, trustee and. Because I think it ends with Odd Bond Society. I'm trying to get my card. No, it's, it's not the Audubon. It's the, the owner of this house here, yeah. Marjorie. He owns this parcel and this parcel. The Audubon owns okay. this. Okay, I see. Dog, yeah. Yep. You're right. I mean, it's still eventually, you know, there's still potential to make a path or something down there. I don't know about driving a vehicle. It's a a bit of a slope. You said you walked it, right, Steve? Kind of a drop off on that side, and a lot of you know you'd have to cut down. Well, a bunch yeah, of you have to zigzag down. Off. You have to zigzag down so you'd have a uh, reasonable pitch for a, a, a car, automobile, or truck. But uh, and I don't know what it would look like if you just stuck on ninety-seven point two. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to drive. Um, I've walked that area. That's that wouldn't be passable with a vehicle, unless. I mean, you know, and that's marsh there too. I mean, that just installing a road, I would think, would be problematic with conservation for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, 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 and then you know, you think if you're going to make a road that goes down there, then you'd have to be clearing trees and things like that, which you know. Yeah, you would you know, have to be. Potential, potential for like a footpath, right? Like parking in the turnaround and maybe some kind of a path down. But I I don't think extending that road. Well, the, the, the turnaround isn't really a turnaround. It's Yeah, there weird. is no parking. It's, it's a private dead end road. I don't see the homeowners being amenable to allowing public access. It's, if we want to pursue it, we could try, but I don't think they're open to it. Well, it would Just be an a, idea, folks. Audubon would be in a butter, right? So Audubon's part owner of the road. We're not sure. Mm. I think the the KP law opinion clarified that just because you abut a road doesn't mean that you have access. Yeah. Got it. I don't know the words, but you know what I mean. Right, right, right. Doesn't doesn't guarantee you access. So. More legal questions. <laughs> yes. But, More legal um, questions. Great. Okay. Well, hopefully we get a meeting, and, and you know we can 
ask them about that, what they think. So that's great. Anything else to add? Could, could you, we agreed on a number of actions. Could you remind us what we have agreed on? Um, on actions? <laughs> I don't even think. Um, we agreed. Or, or, bet, or if you'd prefer, uh, as you put the minutes together, right. send us just, we agreed on, to do a number of things and I want to be sure I remember what it is I agreed to do. Got it, got it. Yeah. Um, I understand, John, exactly how you feel. Yes, of course. At, at our age, we don't remember things quite so well. <laughs> Got it. I don't either. <laughs> I hear you. But anyway, um, yeah, so I can do that. I can review all of our actions, things that we need to do um, before our next meeting. And um, who wants to chair the next meeting? I, I chaired the one before this one, didn't I? <laughs> you did, yeah. Okay, so I'm bowing out. Melissa, You're muted, you Melissa, but it looks like you raised your hand anyway. You got it. We'll take it. All right, so Melissa for the next meeting. Um, Thank you, Melissa. You're a good mapmeister too. Yes, yes, you're really good. I couldn't seem to get that working. I don't know what I was doing wrong. <laughs> no problem. All right, yeah, so I'll get that list out of things we need to do. And um, yeah, are we are we ready to adjourn? A move. Did I make a move that we adjourn this meeting? A second. Okay. We'll take a vote. Sonia, aye. John? Aye. Barbara, aye. Barbara? Aye. Steve. Melissa. Aye. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. It was um, nice meeting with you again, and we'll, we'll see you hopefully in a month. Okay. Thanks. And don't forget to turn off recording. Thank you. <laughs>